Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Faith Family Church of God's Sunday night service. We're so glad you're joining in with us. Whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, make sure to like and comment to let us know that you are joining in with us. And if you're watching on Facebook, make sure to share this on your Facebook page and on community pages that you're a member of. And also, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to share this with your family and friends. Send them the link so that they can see this video because social media is a very important aspect of witnessing and ministry, whether it is Facebook or YouTube, because everybody has some kind of access to some form of social media, right? So yes, this is a very important aspect of witnessing and ministry by sharing this on your page and with your family and friends to get the word of God out to those around us. All right, and if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to click that subscribe button and then click the bell for notifications when we go live and post new content because there's always something awesome happening at Faith Family Church of God, and we never want you to miss out. So make sure to click that subscribe button and then click the bell for notifications. Before we go into our word tonight, let us join together in prayer. Would you join me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We just thank you for this day. We thank you, God, just for bringing us together once again to be in your presence and your spirit, and Lord, to glean from your word. Every time that we gather together to glean from your word, to hear your word, God, we can draw something from it because your word is alive and well, and you speak it from your mouth because, and because you are the word, God, because you spoke the word out of your mouth. Every time that we gather together to glean from the word and learn from it, we can learn something new. It can help us, draw us closer to you, make us stronger in you, give us fresh breath, new life, God. Every time we open up your word together and we read from it, we can learn something new that will draw us closer to you, make us stronger in you, God. Lord, so bless this time together, Lord, in this in the word. Lord, in Jesus' name, use me for your glory. Have your way in me and through me, God, as your messenger to bring about the word that you have for your people. And right now, also in the name of Jesus, we come before you, God, in one mind and one accord for every need. God, touching on every need that we have been praying over Sunday mornings and then on prayer um, on Monday nights and even in our own private time, wherever we are all throughout the week, God, when we bring our needs to you, God, you know, whatever the need is, we lift it up to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, trusting and believing that every need shall be met according to your will and for your glory, God, as we trust and believe and give our needs to you, God, and speak them to you. You already know what they are, Lord, but as we bring them to you, God, we're bringing them to you in an act of faith, God, trusting and knowing that you are God and that you are provider. You are everything that we have need of, God. So it's just a matter of us bringing it before you and trusting in you, God, letting you have your way, Lord, and that you would do mighty things, God. We know that these things shall be met according to your will and for your glory, God. Have your way in each and every need. Meet every need for your glory, God, no matter what the need is. Spiritual, physical, emotional, financial blessings in homes, marriages, families, in school, and on jobs and careers, God. No matter what it is, we know that you have the answer and you are the answer, God. So we just ask that you move in a mighty way in every situation, in every heart, every soul, every life, every need. Lord, and just again, have your way in this word tonight. Draw us closer to you. Help us to hear this word, God, to take it into our hearts and souls and spirits, Lord God, that it would not be stolen away from this by the enemy, but that it would just sink deep within us and that it would cultivate us, draw us closer to you, make us grow in you, Lord God. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, guys. So last time, Sister Brenda began our study on the book of Acts, and she led us through verse 11 of chapter 1. Sister Brenda reminded us that when Jesus was first put into the tomb, the disciples were definitely in a what now situation. They were mourning and they didn't understand why Jesus was the Son of God, yet put into a tomb dead and lifeless. They thought, if he was the Son of God, why is he like this? 
She reminded us that Jesus showed himself to them and proved to them time and time again that he really was alive when he rose from the dead and that he was the same Jesus that they knew from before. And he taught them about the kingdom of God. She reminded us that when we find ourselves in what now situations, we need to remember like he was showing them here, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will always be the same. No matter what situation or circumstance we find ourselves in, and no matter what the world gets into, Jesus is always Lord. He's always going to be the only way to God and to heaven, and his word is always the truth. She reminded us that Jesus taught his disciples for 40 days before he ascended into heaven. See, he had to lay the groundwork of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. He knew that they would need to focus on the kingdom of God and the king of the kingdom, especially when they entered into more seasons of what now in their lives, no matter what came their way. And she reminded us that no matter what happens in our lives and in all around us, we need to remember the king and his kingdom. And Sister Brenda reminded us that Jesus reminded his people of the promise of the Holy Ghost who was coming in order to transition them from being dependent on seeing him in the physical to knowing him in the spiritual things and seeing beyond this physical frailty. And she reminded us that the Holy Ghost was given to the early church, yes, but he is also given to you and to me if we will just accept his gift. And we need the Spirit of God, church. We need the Holy Ghost to fill us and refill us time and time again. We need to yield to him. We need more of him as his Spirit gives us the power to pray for the lost and for those who have needs. His Spirit gives us the words to say to those who need to know that Jesus is real and he loves the lost. And his Spirit will empower us to go and to share what he has done for us. That's the recap from last time. So tonight we're going to continue our study, picking up with Acts chapter 1, verse 12, going through the end of the chapter to verse 26. So let us read and then we'll break it down. Acts chapter 1, verses 12 through 26 reads, Then they returned to Jerusalem, from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying, Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Altogether, the number of names was about 120 and said, men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his entrails gushed out. And it became known to all those dwelling in Jerusalem, so that the field is called, in their own language, Achel Dama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his dwelling place be desolate, and let no one live in it, and let another take his office. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. And they proposed to Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Okay. It's a lot of scripture, but let's dive on in. So verse 12, 
It says, Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. So we see that after Jesus had ascended into heaven, the disciples followed the instructions that were given to them. And see, this was notable obedience. They returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is also known as the Mount of Olives. We are told that this distance between the Mount of Olives and Jerusalem is a Sabbath day's journey. See, this was the distance permitted by Jewish custom to travel on a Sabbath day, about a half of a mile. And you can reference that with Exodus 16 and 29, Numbers 35 and 5, and Joshua 3 and 4, again for reference. But this was the distance that a Jewish person could travel without breaking the law. See, this distance was determined because it was the distance between the Ark of the Covenant and the rest of the Israelite camp in the wilderness days after Israel had their exodus or exit from Egypt. The idea here was that every person within the camp or within the city would be close enough to enter the center of worship to take part in the services without having to travel so great a distance that the Sabbath would become a harried and busy day. However, this law, although noble in intent, was soon abused by strict legalism. So there's a little bit of background on the Sabbath day's journey. And verses 13 and 14 says, And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying, Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. So see, when they got back to Jerusalem, they went into this upper room of the house that they were staying all of the disciples, along with the female followers of Jesus and with Jesus' mother and brothers. It is speculated that the upper room here could have been the room where Jesus spent the last Passover, the last supper, with his disciples, or the room in which he appeared to them after his resurrection. It's also speculated that it's possible that the same room was the site of both events. And this room may have belonged to Mary, the mother of John Mark, See, because her house is mentioned in Acts 12 and 12 as a meeting place of disciples. Nevertheless, they were all staying in this upper room as Jesus had instructed until they received the power from on high that Jesus had promised. Then it says they were all in one accord in prayer and supplication. In one accord means to be praying of the same mindset and with supplication See, supplication means to ask or beg for something earnestly or humbly in desperation. So they were all praying and agreeing together for the same thing in desperation for a move of God. This is a notable prayer. See, this does not mean that people will always think and feel the same way about everything all the time. But this is why there's so much division in the church, because people think, well, I don't want to go to this church because so-and-so said this, or so-and-so did this. I didn't agree with that. They do this at that church, or they don't do this, and they do that at this church, and I don't agree with it. We can all have our differences of opinion on some things, and the disciples and the followers of Jesus probably had different ideals and different thoughts, because you know what? They were human, just like us. But the difference is... The difference is putting aside all personal feelings and differences and committing to one task together. In this case, as Jesus, their teacher, their savior and friend, had ascended into heaven, they were probably somewhat fearful of what would come next as Jesus was no longer physically with them. So they followed Jesus' instruction and began praying together earnestly, desperate, for the power from on high to come and praying that they will be able to do what Jesus has tasked them to do. Be witnesses to everyone about Jesus Christ, Savior and Messiah, who came to save the world from our sins. Our church is a strong church because we believe together. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, Though one may be overpowered by another, 
two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. See, church, if we unite in our faith, we can touch heaven concerning anything. If only all of the churches around the world would catch on to it. If only all the different Christian denominations would catch on to it. Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Church of God, Church of God of Prophecy, Church of God in Christ, Church of Christ. All of the different Christian denominations. If we would just put aside our differences and bind together earnestly, desperately seek after God. Imagine what we could accomplish for the kingdom of God. We could turn this country around. We could turn the world around for the glory of God. We would see miracles, signs, and wonders, breakthroughs, and many people would come to salvation in Jesus Christ. Christ. That's what it's all about. After all, right, church? Right. Jesus said the world would know that he was sent from the Heavenly Father when people saw the love between believers, as John 17, 21 says, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, and that the world may believe that you sent me. If we unite together in the spirit of Jesus, then just like the song famously says, we could help heal the world and make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. See, it's not about turning a blind eye to sin and being tolerant of sin. That's what the world wants us to do because the world is happy in their sin. But it's rather about binding together, repenting together, and coming after God together, seeking after God together, going after him with all of our hearts together for each one of us, for our families and for our cities, for our country, for our world, for everyone around us. When we get together in the Spirit of God, in one mind, in one accord, as the body of Christ united, we will grow stronger, we will draw closer to God, and we will see the glory of God manifest more in our lives, our families, our churches, our cities, our country, and in this world. Verses 15 through 17 says, and in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Altogether, the number of names was about 120 and said, Men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before the mouth by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus, for he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry. Peter stood up to address the crowd, of which there was about 120 people. Even from the earliest days of the apostles' calling, Peter assumed a position of leadership. And though he often made mistakes, as we do because we are all human, Peter was never bashful about dealing with problems. He told them that Judas had betrayed Jesus, not spoiling the plan of God, but fulfilling the plan of God and fulfilling the prophecy that David had spoken concerning a disciple betraying the Lord. And this was inevitable that the matter of Judas and what had been done had to be dealt with so that they could move forward. But here Peter equated the speech of David with the voice of the Holy Spirit. See, this is an example of the biblical doctrine of inspiration, which asserts that the words of Scripture are the words of God given through men with no error, with no contradiction, as referenced in 2 Timothy 3.16, 1 Peter 1.11, and 2 Peter 1.20-21. Again, those references are 2 Timothy 3.16, 1 Peter 1, 11, and 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. 
Verses 18 through 20 says, Now this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his entrails gushed out. And it became known to all those dwelling in Jerusalem, so that the field is called in their own language, Akel Dama, some people say, but it's actually probably Akel Dama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his dwelling place be desolate, and let no one live in it, and let another take his office. So Peter now tells how the money, the 30 pieces of silver that Judas had betrayed Jesus for, was used. It was used to buy a field. And since the money legally belonged to Judas, the priests that had purchased the field purchased it in Judas's name. And Peter explains the death of Judas, letting the crowd know that Judas fell from the tree that he hanged himself on, falling headlong, and when his body hit the ground, his stomach burst open and his innards gushed out. And for this reason, as well as because of the blood money that Judas had gained for betraying Jesus, this is why the field was called Akel Dama, the field of blood. This place would become a cemetery for the poor to fulfill scripture in Psalm 69 and Psalm 109, where this place would be desolate and no one would live in it. Peter also used these two psalms for the basis of beginning the process of choosing another to take Judas's position amongst the apostles. Verses 21 through 26. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, Beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. And they proposed two. Joseph called Barsabbas, whose surname was Justice. So Joseph, Barsabbas, Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, Show which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. So again, Peter applied Psalm 69 and Psalm 109 to the apostle situation. Psalm 69 speaks to the removal of the psalmist's enemy, and Psalm 109 and 8 mentions the replacement of an enemy by someone else. Peter, enlightened by the teaching of Jesus as referenced in Luke 24, 44 through 46, regarded these scriptural references as ultimately speaking of Judas the traitor. It was the defection of Judas, not his death, that caused Peter to ask the disciples to choose another to replace him. When James was later killed in Acts 12 and 2, no replacement was chosen for him. That was something to note. The requirements to take Judas's place were his replacement must be someone who was with them from the time Jesus was baptized by John all the way to when Jesus ascended up into heaven. So again, he must be someone who was with them from the time that Jesus was baptized by John all the way to when Jesus ascended into heaven. They had to be an eyewitness to the miracles and teachings of Jesus. And the next requirement was that they had to be an eyewitness of Jesus' resurrection. With these requirements, they had two candidates set before them. Again, Joseph, Barsabbas, Justice, and Matthias. So the disciples said, Lord, you know all things, so you decide. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship. And they cast their lots. We know it is rolling the dice. It was customary for the Jewish people to determine the will of God on certain questions by this method. See, this was notable reliance on God. Though they were not yet filled with the Holy Spirit, they still wanted to choose a method that, that would make them rely on God to determine the outcome. The names of the candidates were probably written on stones and put in a jar that was shaken until one of the names fell out. The name that fell out of the vessel would be the one that God had chosen to take the place of Judas. But see, the fall of the lot was not determined by chance. 
but rather determined by God's sovereignty. As Proverbs 16.33 says, the lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. So the Lord chose Matthias to replace Judas. And see, some people may be like, why were they rolling dice or casting lots to determine this? That doesn't seem right. However, they did so earnestly trusting that God would determine the outcome. This was much better than what people rely on today, relying on their own emotions, their circumstances, their feelings, or their fleshly desires. Relying on those things can get us in trouble. But how much more different would our lives be if we went to God in prayer over every situation, every choice, every decision? Remember that the apostles were in unforeseen times. Their friend, their teacher, their confidant and savior was no longer physically with them. They probably felt lost, not knowing what was coming next. So with them not knowing what would come next, they hung on to Jesus' instruction. They waited together and they prayed for God's guidance and for the helper, the Holy Ghost, who would come and equip them for their everyday lives from this point forward, equipping them for ministry and witnessing, equipping them to be able to withstand attacks from the devil, and equipping them to truly be Christians, Christ-like followers. And church... As we close tonight, we need to follow the example of those in the upper room for our own individual lives, as well as for each other, for our churches, for our cities, for our country, and our world. We need to bind together in faith, one faith in Jesus, one Lord, who is Jehovah God and Jesus Christ, and one mission to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and the love of God to all who would receive it everywhere we go across the globe. If we united together, my goodness, if we united together, there's no telling what we could do. Rather, not even what we could do, because it's not about us, but what God would be able, what, what he would do through us, how this world would change for the glory of God. So yes, we need to follow the example of those in the upper room and bind together, put aside differences, and just focus on God and his word and his instruction and pray together earnestly, desperately for us and for our lives and our families and our nation and our world. What do you have going on in your life? that you really need God to move in a supernatural way about. Again, if we would earnestly pray on these things and support one another and help one another seeking after God together and block out distractions, block out disturbances and anything that was not wholly pleasing or acceptable unto God, we would truly begin to see God move mountains in our lives and in our families' lives and in this world. So church, will we become resolute to obey instructions of Jesus, to wait on the Lord and pray about what we need, and pray about our country, pray about our world, until we see God move? Will we unite together? That's why this background tonight was chosen. You see how everybody is standing here united, hand in hand, in prayer. They're in the same mindset. One mind, one accord.
if we unite together. There's no telling. What awesome things would happen in this world as God moved through us as the body of Christ to reach the lost, the dying, the hurting, the corrupt in the world, those walking in sin and darkness. There's no telling what would happen. So will we unite together all over the world as the children of God to reach the world? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you and we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that we've spent together in your word. Lord, and we do thank you for reminding us that we need to stand together, united in your spirit, God. That if we bind together, touching anything, that there is nothing that is too hard for you to accomplish, that, that anything is possible to those who believe according to your will and for your glory, God, because we can do all things through you who give us the strength, God, and because nothing can stand against you. It's not about us, God, but it's about standing in faith, believing, and trusting in you. Because you're not going to force yourselves on, on the world. You're not going to force yourself on the world, God, because you're a gentleman. You want people to come to you. You give the opportunity. You've given the opportunity of salvation, and you continue to give it time and time again. And you're being, and you, you, and it's not your will that any would perish, but that all should come to repentance. But you give the world free choice, God, free will, and you want people to come to you out of love, God, and out of need. Lord, and if we would bind together in your spirit touching anything and touching our families, touching our churches, touching our cities and our government, our nation and this world, that you could truly work in us and through us and we could see a mighty change happen in this world all around, that people would come to know you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior, that they would turn their lives around, give their hearts to you and souls to you, accepting you as Lord and Savior of their lives. And the world would become a much better place if we would just bind together. So thank you for reminding us, God, that we just need to stand strong in our faith, Lord, even if it's something that we're going through in our personal lives um, on a daily basis or, you know, whatever the case is, even if we would just stand resolute in our faith, earnestly seeking after you for our situations, then we would truly see miracle signs and wonders in our lives and in our family around us, God, every way, every aspect of our life. But again, if we would stand united together in the faith, trusting and believing, oh, the things that could we that could be accomplished for your kingdom and for your glory, God, for you. So again, Help us to stay humble before you always. Help us to earnestly seek after you more and more each and every day, studying your word, praying to you every day, being in worship to you every day. And let us bind together, not as necessarily different denominations, 
different names coming together, but just as Christians, as children of God. It's not in the name of a church that salvation comes. It's not in that way, but it is through you, Jesus Christ, that we have salvation. So help us to put aside differences amongst denominations in Christianity and help us to bind together in the name of Jesus Christ, Savior, Messiah of the world. And as we bind together in your name, Jesus, let us stand strong in the faith, knowing that you can do all things, and that as we touch together on any one thing, we can claim the scripture that it shall be done by the Father, and that when two or three or more are gathered together in your name, you are in the midst of us, Lord. So help us to bind together in your presence, in your spirit, in your name, Jesus. Not by our might, but by our power, but by your spirit. Lord, and just help us to do your will. Use us for your glory as the church, as the body of Christ. To do the work you've called us to do. And to bring in the harvest of souls. So that they can see you, Jesus Christ. As who, as the, as the, ultimately who they need in their lives as Savior of the world, that they would bear open their hearts to you and accept you into their hearts and souls as Lord and Savior for the forgiveness of their sins. Because we have all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We're all in need of a Savior. And there's coming a time where it will be too late to accept you. And... Lord, but again, it's not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So again, help us to be united together in the faith for your will and for your glory, for your kingdom, God. So that we can win lost souls for you and help each other on our journey as we all seek to make it to heaven together. One glad day to be with you for eternity. We thank you, and we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for it, God. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody says, amen and amen. Love you guys. Uh, I just love when we can get together in the presence of God to discuss the word of God, to eat of the word of God. It's what we need. We need fellowship in the word. We need fellowship together. We need unity all around the world. Because the devil is roaming about like a roaring lion, lion seeking whom he may devour. And he is more active now than he has ever been. And so let's just bind together in our faith and help one another, support one another. And let us pray on these things, and let us pray for our, again, our families, our churches, our cities, our governments, our nation, and our world. Remember that tomorrow night, which is Monday night at 6 o'clock, we have online prayer. So again, Monday night, 6 o'clock for prayer. Send your prayer requests into us online, might be the usual means. Uh, Facebook is the Faith Family Church of God Facebook page. And if you're a member of our church, it's the FFCOG Family page. And also through Sister Marsha's groups, the Special Spoken and Spoken Prayer Request group and the Lord is My Shepherd Encouragers group. You can also text or message uh, Pastor, Sister Brenda, or myself and let us know of your prayer requests. If you have a praise report, we want to know that as well. If you'd love to share that with us, we'd love to rejoice over what God is doing in your life. So make sure to send us those prayer requests and praise reports so that we can pray over them together tomorrow night, Monday night at 6 o'clock, online, Facebook, and YouTube. And then 
of course, we have Tuesday nights that we do our Youth Word on at 6.30. But, of course, this Tuesday night, we will have off for the Youth Word. So we will join together again on Wednesday night at 6.30 for Pastor with the Bible study. So again, this week, it's Monday night, 6 o'clock for prayer. And then Wednesday night, 6.30 for Bible study with pastor. And then again, Sunday morning, 10.45 a.m. for morning worship, Faith Family Church of God, 3808 Old Brandon Road in Pearl, Mississippi, on campus and on live uh, Facebook, Facebook Live. And then, again, Sunday morning's message will be uploaded to YouTube later that day. And then don't forget, Sunday nights, again, Facebook and YouTube at 5 p.m. for the evening Sunday Word. There's always an opportunity to come together in the presence of God and glean from and learn from the Word of God together. Will you take the opportunity? Love you all. Have an awesome week. God bless, and we will see you all tomorrow night for prayer. Amen. Love you all.